so let's talk about Carnot mapping. Carnot mapping is a simpler way to do some simplification of logic expressions. So we're going to look at how to do two, three, and four variable K maps, and that's going to be broken down into smaller process, okay? Um, and at some point we'll also talk about the don't care conditions. Just so you can see, this is a Boolean algebra simplification of this original process, and this is the K mapping simplification, and they're equivalent. All right, so K maps are a graphical technique. Um, they're cleaner and they're very procedural. They can be used for any number of input variables, but we only practically use them for two, three, or four variables because you actually need more than two dimensions once you go more than four variables. So each place in a K map corresponds to the address in a truth table. And they're labeled so that as I move from here to here, only one variable change. So you'll see from here to here, not A stays the same, but B changes from not B to B. As I move from here to here, A and B stay the same, but C changes, okay? And so it lets us group things in a way, all right, that's simpler. So once I make my groups, I write terms, and then I join those terms with OR statements. So we get it out in a sum of products format, which we prefer. Okay, so adjacent cells give us a simplification. So look, if I put a one here, and this was the place in an equation or a truth table that corresponded to the term not w, not x, all right, then this one corresponds to w, not x. See, it's in the w row and the x column, all right? So here you see how we would do that in Boolean is we would factor the not x out, then we'd have not w or w. Well, we know that one's always 1. We also know that x and 1 is x. So not x is the only term that's left. So those are adjacent, so we put a loop around them. And what we do is we look at this and say, what changed? Okay, so from here to here, as I move down, W changed, and you see that not X, because I didn't move from row to row, didn't change, so I throw away what changes, so I get rid of the W, and that gives me the not X term. All right, so this is what a two variable K map might look like. So we start here with not W, we start here with not X, so I change by one variable, and I go to X. Here I go from not W to W, change by one term, Okay, and then I'm going to take these and put them in. So the term that goes, the output that goes with not w, not x, goes here. I'd put a 1 here. Okay, so the next place is I have w, not w, and x. Well, that'll be here, and I put it in. And so the next one I have is w, not x, and it goes in. And then I have w, x, and it goes in. So now you see I've put my zeros and ones in my K map. All right, so there are four groups of one, and you can see them here, all right? We're gonna go through them. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Okay, here's a pair. All right, so when we have that pair, we throw away the B because B changed, not A stayed the same. Here, A stayed the same. Here, A changed, so we keep not B. Here, A changed, so we keep B. There's also a group of four there. Okay, so here's the process. We put ones and zeros in the K map after we construct it. First, we group any isolated ones, anything that can't be put together with another one. Then we group hexes, he so that's 16. Then we group eights, then we group fours, then we group twos. Then we write the terms and or them together. All right, so we do the isolated ones and then we go for the biggest groups possible. So let's look at this example. Okay, so let's look at this example. You have this truth table. And so I went ahead from this truth table and typed out the expression. So this is not J and not K or not J and K. So now if I want to, um, make a K map for that, all right? Well, let's start by doing the Boolean on it, okay? 
and we're going to do f is equal to, and both terms have a not j in it, so I'm going to factor it out. And then I'll have not k or k. Wow, I'm mixing my signs up. So what do we remember about not k or k? That's always equal to 1, right? And so what's the other thing we know here? We know that um, not j and 1 is always going to be equal to not j, right? So we really get when we do the Boolean, f is equal to not j. Now this is a fairly simple example, but let's look at what the k-map for this one would look like. So I'm going to draw, well, I'm going to, let me move over here and erase it. I drew it too close to what I was doing. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make a little table here. And it's only two variables, so I only need four cells. I need the same number of lines I have in my truth table. Okay, so I like to put in this corner one knot and in this corner the other knot. Okay, so this is not J and not K. So if, as I move from here to here, I can only change one thing. This is the K, so it's going to change to K. This one is going to be J. Okay. So now I want to go back and put ones where there are um, ones in my truth table. So I have one here and I have one here. Right? So I want to take those and put them in my truth table. So where do they go? Oops. All right. So where might that be? Let's, I'm going to just try to change my pen color here. So maybe you can see the difference a little bit. Okay, so the first one is at not J, not K. So I'm going to put a one here. The next one is at not J, K. So I put a one here. And then I put zeros in the other locations. Okay. Now I want to go in and look for the biggest group I can find. Well, what's the biggest group I find here? I see, I only see the one pair. So I draw a loop around it and I look and say, what changed? Well, as I move from here to here, K changed, but I have not J. So this means that my expression is F is equal to not J. All right. So this gives you an idea of um, what it would look like.